What's up everybody, it's your boy Melf here in our classic trailer review, and today I'll be doing a review, well, since I, if you're trying to guess, yeah, Universal copyrighted again, ugh, when it comes to animation, no, when it comes to live action, fuck you, so yeah, I'm doing something different, just skipping away from those, ugh, copyright idiots, so I'll be doing a reaction on a sequel to Creepshow, the 1987 film Creepshow 2. And this was directed by Michael Gornick and screenplay by George A. Romero and based on the stories of Stephen King. And yes, Stephen King was involved in this film too, but in a minor casting role. I consider the this... The first one and Tales from the Dark Side of the movie, a good trilogy. If you're asking me, well, hey, what about the third? We don't talk about the third one. Remember the song we don't talk about Bruno? Exactly. We don't talk about Creep Show 3. It sucks. Hell no. But yeah, before we begin, did you just did you subscribe? Did you hit the bell? If so, are you ready for more four tales of horror? If so, grab your popcorn, grab your disgusting soda. This is going to be a bumpy ride. So let's check out this trailer, and I'll talk about it in the moment. Let's go, shall we? I hope it does not get copyrighted. Indeed. Many would argue that nothing of significance has happened since. Uh huh. Until now. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh, this is crazy. This is totally crazy. Of course. Go. Oh come on! Why cut there? Dum dums. Peek a poo. Yeah right. Say cheese. Oh god, the tar monster. Oh god. Ooh. Well, so long, Tubby. Okay. Let me rewind back. Wait for it. Oh, the internet's back? Nah, fuck that internet. Okay, I have to pause here. <laughs> See that, boys and girls? This is the creep, your narrator. If you recall in the first film, the narrator said in the first film, the well, the creep hardly appeared because he only appeared in cart in comic form and as a puppet, a skeletal form. Renard is a real skeleton from India. This is the creep, and he's the narrator who does like narrating the four stories. First, began here, delivering the magazines to Billy. And we'll get to this well. And fun fact, Stephen King appears in the uh, in the fourth story as a minor role, a truck driver. Hey, he'd been doing cameos before Stan Lee. I don't know if Stan Lee did cameos during that time period. Hmm, I wonder. But yeah, this is the intro, this is the second design of the creep for this film because there are three designs of the creep. You have the creep from the first film. This is the second film. I don't count the third because I don't know. I think they'll know no creep appeared. So no. And the one from the series, which tell you true, this the creep from the series is a hybrid of the the film version and the creep keeper from Tales from the Crib, which it looks damn good. A more psychotic version of the creep keeper. <laughs> but let's continue, shall we? Oh God! Nope. Give me your hair, bitch. I was left. I'm the gutter. Oh God. Oh, 
Nope, mine. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, going to a theater near you. New World Pictures. And yes, Warner Brothers was in, the, is, was in this film, I recall. I think so. No, they weren't. But yeah, this film was involved with, you know, George A. Romero. It was directed by Michael Gornick. It was, well, Stephen King was in a minor role. And also, it also had, and we'll believe this, guess who voices the creep? Tom Zavini. The man behind the most awesome makeup and special effects. You've seen it, like, from Friday the 13th, Creep Show. I don't know what he did with Evil Dead as well. I think so. But hell yeah. He does the voice of the creep. So when you hear him talking, that's Tom Savini. Which is actually pretty cool. And also, there's been a lot of good work. So I want to talk about, you know, there you got the cast. You had George Kennedy. Which, well, he was a famed Hollywood star. He plays in the... In the first, I think it was the first episode, the first story, Old Chief Woodenhead, which was the Native American cigar statue you saw looking at the at the Native Chief. I like that story because I kind of wish someone from Etsy would make a resin statue of, of Chief Woodenhead. I want that put on my bookshelf next to my horror stories. That would be pretty cool. Next to the creep. Hey, from the first film. Hell yeah. I think that would be my only favorite story from there. Chief Woodenhead. And you also have a good line of cats. You have George Kennedy. You have Dorothy Lamour. You have Frank Salcedo. I think he's a Native American. Let me see. Yeah, he's a Native American actor. Okay. Who's been cast in smaller roles, but I think this film be on a good boost. You also have... Another one, Sam White Moon. I think he's another Native American who plays the nephew who kills the two couples of the owner of the store. Just to go be famous. You also have David Hol Holbrook. I think he's related to, da to Nathaniel Holbrook. That's Fatso Gribbons. Would you know that's the fat guy who got knifed while drinking beer. And Andy and De Don Harvey as Andy Cavana, another of the criminal trio. Which he's the one who gets massacred in you see the shadow cell where Chief Wooden holding a axe. Yeah, that scene. And we also have a lot of other like Extras from the Native Americans, which that's actually pretty cool. You actually had actual Native Americans playing their part. It's just some guy wearing tan face. Yeah. Don't make me go over there. As for the guy who played Chief Woodenhead, he was played by Dan Cameron. Straight now, there's nothing much about him. <laughs> Pity. I wish you, they give more information about these guys, but yeah. And recall, this film only girls are like, wow. $3.5 million out of a $14 million budget. Yeek. Yeah. That's not good. Which holds a 29% of the Rotten Tomatoes, which... One Chris cites... This cites... Let's see, not even the meddling of Stephen King or J.J. Romero's writing sensibly can elevate this spineless anthology, which is too simple in its storytelling and too skimpy on the genuine scares. Yeah. But it's, it's now getting a cult following. And plus, you can find this on YouTube. There's actually a full, you can find a full film on YouTube here. Just put Creep Show 2. And boom, get the full film round on YouTube. You won't be finding the first film because, hello, Warner Brothers. And this film was released by, hmm, 
Let's see. Mm -hmm. By New World Pictures. Which is a, you know, one of those other distributors. I wonder who owns New World Pictures. I gotta check. But hey. Yeah, you see it right here in the... <laughs> I just looked at my computer. I forgot it's right there in the cred. Right there, New World Pictures. <laughs> but what I liked about the trailer, I actually like it. And, okay, they play both live action and animated. Like, you have the anime sequence with the creep, with the creep, explain the story, the next story, and also a side story focused on the kid from the opening, the little boy, Billy, getting his first magazine, the issue of Creep Show, and also getting ch chased by the bullies, which it turns out, when the order were seized, were actually... I think piranhas? No. Uh, fly, Venus flytraps? Let's see. I think they... He, I think those were... Man-eating Venus flytraps. Which ate... And he, you see the look on Bill's face. Mmm, they eat meat. <laughs> you see the creep like... In the back of the truck... Throwing all the mag the copies of Creep Show up in the air, and you see, as the crest go down, you had this. Okay, you have this post credit scene where you had this quote here it says, "Juvenile delinquency is the is the product of pent up frustration, stored up resentments, and bottled up fears. It is not the product of cartoons." In captions, but the comics are heart handy, obvious, uncomplicated scapegoat. If the adults who crusade against them would only get a get esteemed up over such basic causes of delinquency as parental ignorance, indifference, and cruelty. They might discover the comic books are no more a menace than Treasure Island and Jack the Giant Killer. I don't know who wrote that. Who wrote that? I don't know who wrote that. That credit right there, but I go. I agree with that one hundred percent. And it's the same thing with video games. Let me tell you something. Last week, I think me and my friends were. I was with my colleagues. We're taking class on research method. We're talking about, you know, surveys about... There's a whole lot of people controversy on video games. Like, say, oh my god, video games corrupt. They're violent. They can kill people. Here's my... My response. <laughs> Fuck you, religious fanatics. Where's your proof? Where's the research? Where is it, huh? Where's the survey, huh? When me and my friends were doing like selective, he did choose a survey of based on fact. We found one that video games are healthy, plus bring family together. Not just me, one just brought a survey on how Xbox brings family together. It's like, damn. And the back though from the universities. Which, there's proof right there. You can just look up and say, okay, surveys, and boom, you find some information. Not these so called. Hoaxes these idiots say that you know like big games can kill people. Same thing with same thing right here. Same thing with comics that cause delinquency. Go with books like hey Jack the Giant Slayer or Treasure Island. Oh boy. That's another headache for another time. I don't want to talk about it. Ugh. But continuing. But yeah. After the reception of the film, it didn't went up well, but hey, it gained a cult following after this and became fame. Unfortunately, there was a sequel after this, Creepshow 3, which was released in 2006 by Tyrus Entertainment, who had purchased the naming rights, the film had no involvement whatsoever from Stephen King or George Romero. It was critically panned, and rightfully so. The score and music was conducted by Les Reed and Rick Wigman, and a soundtrack album was released by Waxwork Records as double LP record in the U.S. in 2017. 
Hmm. Nice. But yeah, folks, I think that'll be it. My review for my reaction to Creepshow 2. To me, there's some... I, I like Creepshow 2, but... Mm. It should make it more like like the like the first one, more like a good punch right there. The first story I liked because I like how the scumbags get their comeuppance from the wooden chief statue after they killed the the owners of the store they robbed, and they were an elder couple. The leader of the gang is the nephew of the chief, who gives them like a certain payment that the tribe owes to the couple, which the couple didn't want it, but. Mm. If the pay wasn't come full, it's theirs, which they respect their honor. But the nephew is, this, does not like honor. He's like a cocky bastard. When you guys come up and guess what happened to him? He gets scalped. And when the uncle arrives at the front of the store, he finds Chief Woodenhead. Guess what he's holding? His nephew's scalped long hair. What you see in the trailer when he when the chief busts a hole through the wall in the bathroom. Grab him by his hair and scalps him for his crime. Which, hey, you murder two innocent couples for greed, you lose what you love most, your hair. I guess he bled to death as well. But yeah, I think that'll be it for today. And if you're new to the channel, remember to like, subscribe. Hit the bell so you won't miss any of our great content. And remember our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers or at least 500k. Well, it's been 11 years, so let's try again. Because, hey, I'm not getting younger. And my birthday is coming around the corner in August, so let's do this. Until then, have a great day, everybody. And if you like this film, comment down below and tell me what was your favorite story. And what was your thoughts about the film. If you, and remember, it's on YouTube, so the full film's on YouTube, so go right ahead and watch it. It's the same thing, Creep Show 2, so go right ahead. But until then, have a great day, everybody. Peace out.